everybody uh, welcome back to my channel my name is Marie um, and if you're new thank you very much for joining and if you're a returner then you're very welcome back and thank you for watching and this is going to be my second video so I'm still learning um, if you watched the first one you'll know that um, I was talking about the swing coat that I made and how I had to shorten it quite a lot because I'm not very tall Today, I just want to share with you a couple of things that are made that are for people even smaller than me. So, make of that what you will. Before I do that, I'll just tell you what I'm wearing today. Um, it's the Sew Over It Heather dress. And it's... I love this one. It's so, so comfortable. Just the pockets and the... Um, the comfort. I, I really love wearing the Heather dress. I'm trying to find something similar so that I don't have everything as a heather dress so if you've got any suggestions let me know um, but I do like the pockets um, and the fabric is a kind of a ponty fabric with um, it's got some little glittery bits in it I got this in Abercorn in Manchester a few years ago in the days when you could actually go into a store and handle the fabric and I mean Abercorn rummage through their fabric that they sell by weight and oh what I wouldn't give to do that again one day Anyway, um, what I've made is some children's clothes, in fact, teeny tiny baby clothes. And so a friend, colleague of mine that I used to work with, who's obviously younger, had a baby a couple of weeks ago and I thought, I'm going to try and make some dresses to send to her. And they've never made children's or baby clothes, I've never sewed them before. I've knit things in the past, but that was quite a while ago. So I went online, I had a rummage around and found a couple of free patterns and I thought, well, I'll try them out because they're only tiny things and so it, I'll only use up a little bit of fabric. So I've made two dresses um, and I'll put the links to each of the patterns down below in case you want to uh, try them out. The first one is this. I mean, honestly, it's not much bigger than my head. I can't believe humans are this tiny it's such a long time since i held a baby um and this is the person who's designed this calls it the baby peasant dress and that's because it's got um just a little bit of gather elastic around the neckline and around both of the cuffs i've put the elastic in everywhere but i just haven't sewn it together it was too late last night so that's just pinned for the minute but i will do that um and the fabric is just a really lovely teal colour with cats on it and now it looks like some of them are upside down but actually the white cat ah, there we go the big white cat is the right way up and I've gone with that one because I know that mum my friend um, has a lovely white cat so I've gone with that one and then I just put just because it's uh, it's a poly cotton so um, I just put a little white line, lawn lining just in the bodice, not in the sleeves. So I hope that's going to be all right. It just seems teeny tiny. And the second one is this lovely little sleeveless dress, which I made in this farmyard animal print with little style of the fences and cows and pigs. Um, what you might not be able to see on this is that the bodice, it's got this little ruffle gathered on the outside of it, which I just think is so sweet. Um, and the lining, I, just, I lined the top with just some white fabric that I had. And then the bottom of it is actually in two tiers. And the pattern said, um, showed you that to do this one in a white fabric. Like you don't have to, I've just used the same fabric again because had enough of it and I just have to put a couple of buttons on the back there so that's that and again it's so small it's so small anyway um this one I thought was going to be the one that well, if I don't if I don't get it right it doesn't matter and actually I like this one more um I do quite like this one but I just thought I was going to like that more and and I like the fabric more, but I like the design of the other one better. So it's all fairly straightforward. I made it slightly more complicated for myself on this one because 
I decided to do French seams just to keep it neat because it was going to be a gift. Um, but that went together fairly straightforward, this little kind of raglan sleeves at the top and it's just the front and back are the same. Um, this one was a bit more complicated and actually, and I'm really, really grateful for the people who designed it and put the patterns up for free. I, I mean, that's fantastic. But if you do decide to have a go at this one, um, I got halfway through and it said, um, oh, you could put your buttonholes on here now if you want. And when I'd looked at the requirements, it hadn't even mentioned buttons. And I know oh, that's silly. I should have thought, how is the child going to get it on and off? But I didn't. I just looked at what the amount of fabric I needed. And um, so, um, yeah. And then for the ruffles, it said, you know, to kind of ruffle it a little bit like this. And there was a picture. Um, but it's not it's not complicated. Um, yeah. So there are my two little dresses for somebody who's even smaller than me. And I'm just going to probably finish those off tomorrow and then get them in the polis to show my friend and hope that um, at some point later this year, I'll be able to meet baby. It will be lovely. The more observant among you will notice that I've changed. Um, bit of an amateur at this and my camera, my phone ran out of battery half just as I was finishing up the previous uh, little description. So, um, I thought I'd turn the whole thing into an February makes thing and do it as I go along and see if I can get the hang of this any easier. So now I'm not convinced I'm going to wear this anywhere other than around the house or maybe to sleep. Um, but I'm really glad I did it. And I always find that you always learn something. Even In fact, the things that you make the most mistakes on or the things that you like less you, I actually learned quite a bit from those, so I'm glad I've done it. This is um, the Barbie Top, which is free if you are a member of Gertie's Patreon. Um, I'll put the link down below. Um, and I joined the Patreon to get the swing coat pattern and then stuck with it. I, I, I love the, the aesthetic and I love that look. And I, I love the kind of bringing vintage into more contemporary looks. I'm still trying to figure out which of them I can wear as a not any more 20 or even 30 year old and, and I know there aren't any rules but it's about how you feel as well. So anyway, I made the Barbie top. It's a t-shirt. Gertie's not done huge amounts of knit um, garments or garments to be sold in knit fabric. I'll just do a quick stand up for you. So it's, I've shortened it, of course, as I always do. Um, one of the things I do like about it is for the larger cup sizes, it's got a dart in it. Um, and I do find, hang on, bring my chair back up to you. There we go. I do find that, um, although not many things do, having a knit, having a dart in a knit garment when you have a significantly larger bust and then B cups that things are drafted for and makes a massive difference to the fit so I'm really pleased about that. Um, the adjustments are made um, and I've learned quite a lot just from doing one little t-shirt, it's amazing. Um, I knew that I needed, I've learned that I need a narrow shoulder adjustment. Um, I overjudged it because I had forgotten that of course this is quite high around the neck. So it looked really, that pattern piece looked quite wide so I took I took off more than I needed and then I tried to fix it but of course there wasn't enough seam allowance left but it doesn't matter. Um, so we did that and I think I need to do a bit of a forward shoulder adjustment as well which that's really good to know that that might help with fitting around the arms in other garments as well. Um, shortened it at the waist, I also shortened it at the hem um, and I probably just see um, yeah, I think I think I'll probably leave it a little bit longer. Um, the thing that bugs me um, is the high neck. Now, it fits fine. In fact, it's not my horrible scraggy neck, but it's not tight here. Um, and when I was in my 20s, I used to wear um, high necks like that with no sleeves and 
slim jeans. That was that was the style. It was in the it was in the eighties. It was I used to make quite knit quite a lot of tops and then just not put the sleeves on and knit the necklines higher. Um, and used to really like that. So it's not that I don't I'm not used to things around my neck, but I just I think now I just feel I just feel like I want to do this all the time. So. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lower this a little bit and recut a new neckline. And then at least I'll be able to wear it around the place or I might use it for pyjamas on a chilly night. The fabric, I, I'm, the reason that I'm not bothered about um, it not being something that I'd wear an awful lot is um, that I didn't spend a lot on the fabric. I bought, um, I just threw a metre in to... Well, it's an order from pound a meter and so it was, it was only a couple of quid um and i thought well i'll use it for something um because i wasn't quite sure what it was going to look like in person so it's a bit kitschy but um it's actually hollywood knit um it's in kind of pink purpley bit of yellow shade i don't wear a lot of yellow actually or that kind of color so it was, it's good to have a little bit of a splash in there and then it's got this kind of pretend you can probably see it better there pretend um i mean she looks a bit like betty grable and it, and a bit like but lancaster but I might be wrong there and i love my 50s things i just can't there's another one it's a bit gone with the windy but it can't be gone with the wind because gone with the wind's not 50s so anyway it was a bit of silly fabric but i mean amazing look i've got quite a big chunk of stuff left over considering I only had a metre. Um, so I do quite like elements of this and I think if I were to adjust the neckline down here somewhere and make it a bit longer, with the darts actually I think when I got the shoulder sorted I've got quite a nice basic tee because a lot of the other t-shirts that, um, t-shirt patterns out there are, are good but Again, with a larger bust, I think it benefits from the bust art. So that's well done, Gertie. Um, again, I made a 12H size, which is the same as I made for this swing coat. So that's my next make for February. Um, so I'll be back in a minute and I'll show you what else I've been making. Hi, right, back again. Um, it's a, a week or so later. It's the end of half term week and so I have been able to be a bit busier in the old sewing department so um, these will be my final probably February makes. The first one is, let's put it down to a learning process shall we. Um, in January I made um, Gertie's swing coat and lined it and I said I was inspired by a picture which I'll put in here of her um, with a dress in the same fabric pattern as the lining. Now I think for hers she had different fabrics for each which makes sense. I just had fabric left over and I just wanted to get the look. So I've got the look but I, the dress is just I'm not going to wear it anywhere. It's not um, well, it's kind of wearable from a distance it's a dress it does up it covers everything it should um and it is in the same fabric and it's the the first problem is the fabric's not right for a dress it's it's all right for a coat lining it's probably more furniture fabric if i'm honest um i just like the pattern and it's fine for my coat i'm happy with that um so I made up the dress and it's the night and day dress I did it with the yoke skirt um, which kind of comes down a few inches from the waist to the hip and then there's loads of gathers at the hip and I chose that one first of all because I'd never made anything like that before secondly I thought that having the hip having the elongated body and then having the gathers start at the hip instead of at the waist might make me look a bit taller. Um, I think it does, I think it elongates that line. The problem is that then all the gathers are 
at my hip, which is my widest point, and because I'm not very tall, then the, it just kind of swooshes out. Um, and because the fabric's too thick, it swooshes out quite a lot. So, um, you know, the look is there. Um, I had massive struggles with uh, getting the bodice to fit and the reason for that I am convinced is that um, I looked at the measurements and the night and day dress at the moment doesn't go up into extended cup sizes like a lot of the other charm patterns um, patterns do at the moment it's it's in the process of being upgraded and that's fine you can't do everything all at once and there's such a lot in a night and day dress so the biggest cup size there is a double d and i looked at the measurements and the measurements are my measurements but it looks like the inches are in a different place on my body than they are on the pattern so when i made the first 12 um it was just really tight around the arms and it kept taking bits out and it was just I was getting disheartened with it and I thought this is ridiculous so what I did was I went back to a pattern that I know um, that has a bust dart at the side and that I know fits reasonably well on the shoulders and that I like the neckline of um, and the sleeves aren't tight. there's the other thing the sleeves are really tight as well um, so I had to but even when I expanded, you know, changed the seam there, I still couldn't get it to work. So I mashed together the bodice pattern of a dress that I like with this. And so now I've got a bodice pattern that's got darts in the, at the waist, it's got waist darts and side darts, and a neckline height that I like, sleeve, uh, cap and armhole that works for me um, so if nothing else although this isn't an actual night and day dress um, from the pattern for the bodice I've got myself a bodice that I think works for me which is really good um, when the update comes for night and day into the larger cup sizes I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna see if that get see if I can get to fix I think I'd, I'd rather have a you know other options and if I can get it to fit properly with a pattern that's better than me pinching a bit here and there so that's that what I, I love the sleeves on this I haven't probably finished it but it's just got this lovely shape like a little tulip on the bottom just just the way the cuffs so so that's that's really nice so I've done the dress it matches the coat but it's going to sit in the wardrobe now and it'll probably come out again at the end of the year when I do my make nine review and at least I, and because the night and day dress is on it I can say I've done one so that's that massive massive learning curve which I'm pleased about um, and then the next thing that I wanted to show you look at this oh I'm sitting on it it's the snuggliest snuggliest dressing gown this is beautiful cuddle fleece in this deliciously gorgeous um, turquoise blue and it's a love notions pattern and I've made absolutely no adjustments to it now obviously it's a rope it's a dressing gown you're not going to do um, you're not going to need a lot of adjustments you know I'm not going to look at full bust adjustment you put it on, you tie it around your middle, no one's going to see it. Um, I didn't shorten it because I wanted the longer length. It does come down to just about my ankles, as you can see. Um, don't care. Don't care. It's just one of the nicest things. It's got even a little loop to hang it up with. It's got belt loops somewhere. There we go. Look, I made belt loops. Oh. I'm so happy with this. I'm going to put it on tonight. I'm going to snuggle up. I finished it this morning. Um, the only thing, where did I get the fabric from now? I got it from Oh So Crafty, I think. Um, and oh, oh, um, It just sheds everywhere after you've cut it. So when it first came, 
but I put it in the wash and there was a little bit and then I started to cut and it's like confetti everywhere um but it doesn't unravel it's just when you cut it so you cut it and it sheds everywhere um and then once it's finished shedding off the edges it's done so it should be all right now I think it's shed everything I even just whacked it in the tumble dryer um just for five minutes just to get rid of all the extra bits that were there um it did take me about half an hour twice so two separate occasions I hoovered up after I'd cut and then I sewed everything and then I hoovered up again and it there was just bits everywhere but yeah so that's Love Notion's Compose Robe which I made in an um, extra large absolutely no alterations and um I think the, the longest bit is you sew you sew the band on all the way around and then you top stitch all the way around and then you've got the tie around the middle obviously for my waist it's quite long um so you sew that all the way around and then you top stitch all the way around and that it just took time um more than anything else but it's not complicated and i i think i'm gonna make a shorter version in um i made the free charm patterns or gertie's patterns um harlow pajamas um last year and i think i'm gonna make a little silk robe to go with those just to be fancy um but honestly that's a great robe pattern and the last thing to share is another love notions one and this is the first time i've ever done anything like this before um i was looking for um another kind of snuggly dress that was a bit like the heather or this um but just wanted something a bit different because i just thought otherwise my wardrobe's gonna be full of heather dresses and um so um love notions expanded the sizing on their whistler top and added a dress extension as well so that's what this is um and this is made in a green marl it's kind of a sage green might be coming off a bit grey anyway sage green marl um with a lovely fleece back so it's like a, it's called they call it knitted fleece um so it's like a heavier sweatshirt with a fleece back and i got this from tfg fabrics um if you are looking for plain or marled kind of um fabrics sweatshirt jersey um i've got some faux angora from there last year as well they've got such a fabulous range um and lots of different colors for t-shirts and things like that just plain stuff they do the, the very occasional pattern but it seems to be mostly plain um so that's where i got this from do check them out um so the shawl collar on this is the trickiest thing to do but there is a brilliant video um that love notions have done just telling you how to um how to work your way through it and I did it on a twirled it um, just to be sure that I'd got the size right because I didn't want to be swamped and didn't want to be too tight um, and so I twirled it and using that video and then I could do this version completely even without looking at the video because it was so straightforward once I've watched it once that's it was fantastic um, and what I did just a bit of contrast was because on the patterns you see people have done it with completely different colours um, to contrast the, the shawl um, I just turned it inside out so I used the knitted fabric for the shawl the placket at the front and the shawl and I did the cuffs in that as well I think the only thing I did I sh just shortened the sleeves by about half an inch and then the bottom of it I didn't shorten it at the back but I had to shorten it at the front. I'm not sure if I cut it out wrong or if it was supposed to have um, a bit of a dippy front, a bit like a shirt at the front, shirt hem at the front. I wasn't sure about that. I've, that's what I've ended up with because I didn't want it to be too short. Um, and I hadn't, I don't think I had shortened it. Oh, I shortened it a little bit at the waist because otherwise I thought the pockets would be in the wrong place. Um, so I think what I might need to do for the next time I make one is add those inches from the waist on the bottom or at least an inch and a half um, and what I might do 
if I feel like it soon because I might just straighten up that front hem because I'm not sure that it's supposed to be like it is and it won't be too short, it'll be short but it won't be massively short if I'm wearing thick tights and boots. So, and it says to put two buttons on um, and it also says to put buttonholes in it. Well, it's big enough to go over my head anyway. Um, so I just found one lovely big button from Grandma's that's my granny sewing box that I inherited that has all kinds of stuff from years ago. So um, just put one on and sewed it through all the layers of the fabric. So that's my Whistler, which I don't usually wear fabrics like this, but it, honestly, it's the snuggliest thing. I think that's me done for February. I'm not sure there'll be an awful lot more to add on to that. So um, if there is, I'll come back. But for the moment I'll put links to everything I can think of that I've mentioned in the description box. Yeah, thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you again soon. Take care, bye bye.